Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on section 10.7 and this is on the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Now in this section we're going to take some time to actually look at how to better identify and define what an ideal gas is, what it really means to be ideal. And we can do this with a set of postulates. So up here is a set of postulates that's going to help us conceptualize a gas. I say conceptualize because we can't really see gases, so it's really all concept. These postulates will explain how we expect gases to behave. It's an expectation. We're kind of just guessing out there with, of course, some concrete evidence. If a gas meets all these expectations, it's called an ideal gas. And ideal kind of hints, uh, hints that it's a theoretical thing because these are just expectations and we're just conceptualizing. So there are ideal gases, which are going to be stated what they are down here, and there are real gases, which we'll talk about later on. So let's look at our first postulate. The first postulate <clears throat> um, that we can state to expect what an ideal gas will be is that particles are so small in their volume that their size is negligible in comparison to the size of their container. Meaning if their container is this big, their size is extremely tiny in comparison. The second postulate is that particles are in constant motion and are colliding with the container and one another. And these collisions are elastic, meaning all energy is conserved. So kinetic energy that they have is not lost or wasted. Third postulate is that particles are not involved in any attractive or repulsive interactions. In real life, gases, you know, will pass each other, gas particles, and sometimes they will be attracted to one another or would want to repel one another. But in terms of an ideal gas, there is no attraction or repulsion. They would hit each other and bounce away, no problem, no kind of uh, interactive forces there. In the last postulate, that kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. We should already know that one. But for an ideal gas, this is really important. And the temperature, again, is the measurement of the average kinetic energy of a particle. So we know that kinetic energy, are in its formula state here, the average kinetic energy, because we're talking about how it relates to temperature, is equal to 1 half mv squared. And this velocity is the velocity of the particles, the gas particles that are moving in that container. And it has to be an average velocity because we don't know the actual velocity of one particle. We can just kind of uh, get data to get the overall average of what the velocity of those particles will be. You have to keep in mind that velocity and the mass of the particle will determine our kinetic energy. So in a nutshell, as our temperature increases, so if I have gas on, in, I guess, increasing heat source, then kinetic energy will also increase. Thus, my average velocity of the particles in that container will increase. Gentlemen, this is the kinetic molecular theory. Take notes on it. It's pretty simple, but lock this down so that when we compare this to real gases, we're prepared for that. Adios.